Hello everyone, welcome back again in uh, God's Revelation with His Grace uh, Bishop Yusuf. Hello Sayyidina, this is uh, chapter 18, is a very interesting chapter about the judgment of Babylon. So uh, uh, first it says that there was an um, angel coming down from heaven and uh, having a great authority and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. So this, this is the destruction of Babylon, the judgment and destruction of Babylon. So first, who is that angel? It can be literally an angel who announcing the, the fall of Babylon. Some, they say this is the son of God, but actually most of the church fathers uh, or, or the scholars, uh, they say, just, no, just an angel, just an angel. Uh, but he is, uh, has power. And uh, if Babylon is a kingdom of darkness, so one angel here illuminated, illuminated the, whole. the whole earth with his glory. Mm. To, to, if one angel actually illuminated the whole earth, they're not about if all the angels yes. <laughs> and all the saints and God himself. Mm. So there is a, a, a contrast here between kingdom of darkness mm. and how one angel by his glory was able to illuminate the whole, you know, the, the whole world. And of course he's saying Babylon has become a dwelling place of demons and then in verse 3 uh, it's the same message as last chapter for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication like your grace told us last time. But then we see in verse 4 a warning for us for the people of God. It says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her my people lest you share in her sins. That's a beautiful uh, verse. Yes, uh, and actually it can be interpreted in two different ways. A spiritual interpretation, yes, we live in the world, but we are outside the world. Mm. We have our own principles, our own values. So we, we, don't, we are not conformed to the children of the world. So we don't practice, we don't support, we don't approve, we don't defend the evil of the world. Mm. And here I want to send a message to many of our children who actually are confused, uh, and, and if you, your reference, remember we said, Babylon means confusion. confusion. So they are confused and they say, okay, I don't believe in homosexuality, but they can have their own rights. I don't believe in transgenderism, but they can have their own rights. This part of confusion, because supporting anything against God is a rebellion against God. So here God is reminding us, come out of her. Mm. Don't support the principles. You need to, to witness for God. Otherwise, lest you share in her sins, mm. and lest you receive of her plagues. That's one interpretation. But it can be also a literal interpretation how um, when we, we heard about the woman that was giving birth to uh, a male child, mm. and then this woman went to the wilderness, mm and uh, sat in the wilderness for three, three years and, and a half. Uh, so maybe literally the children of God, they have to live literally the, the, these kingdoms mm -hmm. that um, glorify the evil and, and glorify the devil. Li like in the Old Testament, how Lot and his two daughters, they have literally to leave Sodom for God to punish Sodom and to burn mm. and, and destroy mm. Then in verse 6 it says, uh, render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double. So how do we understand this verse? Again, if we go to the two interpretations that I just mentioned, when the people leave uh, symbolically mm. Babel and don't support them, this actually in itself will be a witness against Babel, mm. a testimony against Babel. Mm that there are some people lived a holy life here on mm. earth in spite of all of this. Like how Noah was a witness against the whole world, Noah and his family. Like if there is a, a good student in a class, you know, everybody in the class failed, but this student was able to pass. So this is a student is a witness against the, the whole mm. class. And in this way, actually, the punishment can be double. Mm. One, because of their sins, and the other one, because there is 
a witness here, mm. they can do well, but they couldn't. Right. That is one thing. If we go to the literal explanation, people will literally leave Babylon. This actually will give opportunity to God to utterly destroy Babylon. God in his justice cannot destroy Babylon while righteous people mm. still there. Like Abraham when he spoke to God about Sodom and Gomorrah. So uh, when Abraham told God, are you going to destroy the righteous and the wicked? So God told him, uh, the, the negotiation started with 50 but went down <laughs> until then. But God said, if there are 10 persons, 10 persons mm. in Sodom, I, I will not destroy it. But only were three, Lot and the two others. Mm. So when they left, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. In the same way, when people leave literally Babylon, God will destroy them utterly. So this, by leaving Babylon literally, we are rendering Babylon double because the destruction will be complete and full. But if there are some righteous still there, God, mm. God cannot destroy it mm. because of the 10 persons like 10 persons in Sodom and Gomorrah. So this also tells us something uh, nice that uh, if there are righteous people in any place, they are kind of protecting the place. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Mm. God, because of these righteous people, may protect the whole city or whole country mm. from evil because of these righteous Gosh. people from not evil, from disability on destruction. So then in verse 8, it says, Therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And then we'll, uh, he, he's going to start talking about the groups of people that are going to uh, weep and, uh, and be like very sad about this. But uh, when he says in one day, what does that mean? Yeah, the destruction of Babylon will be all of a sudden and it will happen quickly. Mm. The same meaning we read it in verse 17, for in one hour, mm, yes. not even <laughs> one day, such yeah. riches came to nothing. And also again in uh, verse 21, says, Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. Mm. So this is the sudden and complete destruction. And why God would do this? Because Babylon, in her uh, evil mind, perceive it's a strong kingdom. Nobody can stand against them. Mm. But God actually, uh, as we read in Psalm 2, will laugh mm. again at the, the kings of the earth. You know, you believe you are, you are strong? Actually, verse 7, it tells us what she believes. She yes. says in her heart, I said as a queen, I'm no widow and will not see sorrow. So God actually, okay, do you say this? Okay, one hour. Actually, no, in one, uh, in one day, no, one hour. No, not one, even one hour. This is like a millstone. Mm. You know, millstone is a huge. So once it's thrown into, into the sea, it, it will not come up again. Yes. It will not float again. Mm. So it will be like a millstone thrown into the sea. Mm. Where is your power? Where is your money? Where is your riches? Where is your blasphemous thought against God? Mm. Where? You know, all this is gone in a twinkling of an eye. And, uh, and to continue with this uh, point, so there are uh, some groups of people that are going to weep. Uh, the first group is the kings of the earth. So who are these? Are they actually literally the kings of yeah, the earth? Yeah, the countries that support sexual immorality, abortion, gambling, all these things, when they are supported by the country. Now, unfortunately, many countries legalize marijuana, legalize uh, sexual immorality, legalize same-sex marriage, legalize abortion, legalize gambling. You know, these are the kings of the world. And they are legalizing all these things because they benefit from it, mm. you know, for, for personal gain. So they, they are not crying over Babylon in itself, but they are crying for, for their loss, their loss yes. the personal gain that they lost. Mm. And then the, the second group is the merchants. Merchants are people mm. who are so, for uh, personal gain. They took advantage of all the, the evil and they voted for this evil and supported the kings that are supporting the evil. Mm. So these are the, the merchants, merchants, again for own 
personal uh, gain. Then in verse 12, this is actually something very interesting when he talks about what does Babylon offer? So the merchandise yeah. of the kingdom of evil. We have different groups again of merchandise like gold, silver, precious stones and pearls. That's the, like money and then linen purple silk and scarlet that's uh, cloth <laughs> and then we have every kind of uh, citron wood every kind of object of ivory object of most precious wood so i guess that's the furniture and the luxurious uh, stuff and then we have cinnamon incense and like you know all the perfumes and then food we have all wine oil and flour yes. but then at the end he also says which is very sad bodies and souls of yes that's a very sad, the bodies and so on. Yes. Because these kingdoms actually, they traded, let me say, nothing wrong in trading. But when it is done for selfish ambition or pleasure, and pleasure became the goal, not the mean, th that's sinful. But now they did not trade on all these things, food and furniture and money but the bodies and the souls. Mm -hmm. Bodies, pornography is a very, very uh, good example about you know, how they, they, they use the bodies of the people you know, to make money out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a business, it's a business. And the souls, when they deceive the people, like the heretics, like the new philosophies right now, in our time there are many new philosophies, even they are taking the title of Christianity. Like uh, now one of the f a new philosophy is called progressive Christianity, which actually is against anything traditional, any interpretation or traditional patristic interpretation of the scripture. They say we need to understand the scripture in the light of the contemporary world, mm. you know? so. If the contemporary world is supporting homosexuality, how I can read the scripture to support homosexuality? Mm. No. That is a very demonic concept of trading with the souls of the people. Mm. And unfortunately, many people are following this. And many people, Christian and good Christian people, they are deceived by, by this trade of the souls of the people. Mm. So the most dangerous trade in all this yes, is the bodies and the souls. And I want to tell you something here. The bodies and the souls were mentioned at the end of this list, mm. which means is the cheapest, cheapest thing, yes. you know? So the man or the human being that was created in the image of God and has authority over everything in the world mm. now has no price. Mm. And, and when you see about you no know, pornography or all these philosophies, you know, there is no value. Mm. There is no value for, for the human being who is the crown of the, cre uh, of the creation. That's what Satan does. Yes. Also, in verse 14, if your grace can uh, shed some light on this, when he says, the fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you. I guess this is the punishment of the people who follow the kingdom of evil, is that... Yeah, you know, the, when the Lord said to the Samaritan woman, who drink from this water will never be yes. uh, quenched. It will not quench our thirst. Mm -hmm. So uh, these people long it for these pleasures, right. but they never satisfied, mm -hmm. never satisfied. The only thing that gives us satisfaction is the living water mm -hmm. that we are given by God. Very true. Then after that, after the merchants, we actually see also another group in verse 17, which is the sailors. So I guess these are the facilitators, maybe like the ones who carry merchandise. <laughs> the sailors, if the world is the sea, so the sailors are anybody working in the world, but supporting the trade of these things. So anybody supporting the trade of evil also will be condemned with Babylon. So we have the three groups, the kings, the countries that support the evil. Mm. Then the merchants are like the companies that supporting the evil. Then the sailors, those who are supporting the companies that supporting the countries 
that supportive. Uh, supportive. So here the message, the punishment will actually include everybody. I cannot say, you know, that is a country, that is the mm. king who made this decision. It's not my business, I'm just, no, no, no. It's your business. If you support the company that supported the evil, that support the, the kingdom or, or the countries that supporting evil, also you'll be condemned to it. So it's, it's a serious message to everybody here. And then in uh, verse 22, it talks about the destiny of the kingdom of evil, that uh, the sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard. Yeah, it's a very sad ending, although all these things were happening in the beginning, like it, uh, there was like, you know, uh, happiness and, or you know, temporary happiness and temporary uh, pleasures, yeah. but all these are going to be gone. That's right. But in verse 20, there is again, God, in all this sad image, there is joy. Mm. So he rejoices over her, O heaven, and O holy apostles and prophets. We see the merchants, the sailors, the kings are grieving. Mm. But here, the, the people of God, who were grieved by the temporary victory of the evil, mm. now, now they're gonna have joy. they are rejoicing because the evil is, is over. So uh, with this we end uh, chapter 18. Uh, again, another uh, happy note at the end that uh, although we hear a lot of, of uh, sad things about the punishment of the evil kingdom and, uh, and how sometimes there's going to be a difficult time, but the message that keeps repeating is that if I'm holding tight to God, I will be in safe hands. So uh, with that we end chapter 18 and uh, we'll see you again next time.